Well, Judd, you look so different from the way you look in St. Elmo's fire. Now I have to say, is this look for another picture, or is this Judd Nelson? Well, this is, um, uh, I just finished the film, and since that I haven't really shaved, so I guess this is the irresponsible Judd Nelson look. <laughs> you mean then you're not like this guy you play who's got it together and is kind of the leader and the one they come to with all their problems? Well, I don't know if I'm any more Alec Newberry than I was the character in any of the other films. And I'm sort of a little bit of all of them. Is there one that you would aspire to be more like? Um, FDR. <laughs> FDR? Yeah. Aspire to be like him. Really? Yeah. That's interesting because most people your age wouldn't, you know, uh, they would my, maybe identify with JFK, but not FDR. Ah, uh, JFK, he was a crook. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you, you want to, are you on record as saying that? Know. You just I'm kidding, are. I'm kidding. I mean, you know, actually, there aren't really any any individual parts or or roles or things that I want to play or that I think I'm most like. I feel sort of neutral in life, and I let the parts shape me. Well, that's good because then you go in with an open mind and not a lot of preconceived ideas. Oh, you have to have an open mind. This, uh, of course, you're a college man. You have a really beautiful education, or at least it reads well. <laughs> uh, it looks like I should have gotten a beautiful education, yes, we'll say that. Were you a goof off? No, no, I wasn't a goof off, no. Uh, so you are a college man. Do you then have a real close identification with these people? Well. Hopefully, the identification with these people is not based on the fact that they are in college or that I went to college and can relate or that only someone who went to college in the past can relate. College just happens to be the circumstance where they all got together. The movie takes place in real life where they're all falling apart. So my experience at college didn't necessarily prepare me for the role as much as it was uh, a time when I realized you had to make up your mind what were you going to do with your life. So there was that type of strange pressure. But you have that pressure in high school as well. I have enjoyed watching your work, Judd, because everything you've done is so different. And I first became acquainted with you in Fandango, which uh. I loved. I gave that a really good review as a fun movie and young people that that you could really like and enjoy. And yet, uh, even though in Texas we were pulling so hard for that picture to do well, it didn't do that well. Yeah. So do you have, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, hopefully every film I do does well. I mean, hopefully every film that is made gets seen by a lot of people. I think that's the reason you make the films, is for people to see them. But I don't know uh, anything about marketing and promoting and finances, uh, so I don't know what makes a movie do well and what makes a movie not do well. Hopefully the people that did get to see Fandango enjoyed it and did not feel that it was a waste of their time. Um, but why it didn't do well or why they didn't open it in other areas, I don't know. Yeah. And, it's, and it's too bad because it's a part I probably won't get a chance to play again. I play a sort of nerdy kind of guy and uh, I like doing that a lot. It was fun. Now I guess, you know, now people think I'm some hoodlum. So. <laughs> No. Well, just stick around, probably. Yeah. The movie you just finished now, what kind of a guy are you in that? In um, Blue City? Uh-huh. I play the mayor's son, but I've been away from town for five years. I'm sort of like a drifter, but not a delinquent. Though I do get into a lot of trouble, it's only to try and find out who murdered my father. And, of course, that then is different from what you did in Breakfast Club. Different from St. Elmo's and different from... Yeah. When you went in for St. Elmo's, uh, did you uh, read for this part specifically, or were you trying a bunch of them? Well, what happened was they already threw the part of Billy away, you know, casting Rob. They just threw the part away, and I was too tall for Emilio's part, and was too masculine for Andrew McCarthy's part, and not masculine enough for Demi's part. And <laughs> Allie and Mare are really good actors, and I didn't want to take work away from them, so the only part left was Alec, and I begged for it. <laughs> No. Just that easy. No, um, actually, it was it was pretty much the only part that um, I wanted to do because it was different from previous work. Because I feel it's important to do different stuff, different roles, so the public 
and the people who hire can see you do different things. So they don't think, oh, he's only the type of guy who can beat people up, because it's a shame to typecast yourself. Judd, I've been observing actors for a number of years, and um, something that's just blowing my mind currently is how many good, seasoned, young, I'm talking about very young actors we have. I mean, Molly Ringwald is still in her teens, isn't she? Seventeen. Yeah, and, and it goes from there on up to people like yourself. I, you know, I can't begin to explain it, can you? Well, I think that since they're making a lot of films for young people now, because I, I guess they assume that that's where a big part of the movie-going market is, and that that public seems to have demanded heroes that are peers, which means they have to be of that age, that it just opened up a lot more opportunities for young actors and those slots have all been filled. And I think that the actors seem to be taking what they do reasonably seriously, so uh, they are able to make the commitment to do the good work. I think maybe also uh, the parts are a little meatier now. In other words, it used to be young people's parts were Andy Hardy and Gidget and all that fluffy stuff, you know. And now they're really writing some gutsy parts for young people. But then, see, again, the actors have to be up to doing that. Yeah. And you people are. It blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Thank I, you. I enjoyed St. Elmo's, and I enjoy you. And uh, we hope to have you back in Texas one of these days. Oh, another thank film. you very much. Thanks, oh, Jed. Oh, do um, you need a mic check? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Oh, okay. All right, you're rolling? Is this, mo Is this role more like you yourself? Do you think this role is more like you than other roles you've played? You're a college man. Do you think these young people are typical of the college people you knew? Fandango, of course, was shot in Texas, and we were all pulling for that picture, but it didn't do well. Do you have any ideas about why it did not do well? You know, we keep hearing that Breakfast Club was the little chill, and then there was the big chill, and that this movie, St. Elmo's Fire, is the middle chill. <laughs> what are your thoughts about that? Okay. What is your idea of the right girl to marry? I'll just give you reactions now. Okay. 